difficult day. Let me get you another one. Yeah. What do you care? I enjoy a good story. <laughs> Trust me, it's nothing special. Try me. Showed up, there were people in costume, and uh, like, real life yeah, Dumbledore yeah. showed up. And I remember, yeah, I remember looking out the window and be like, Guys, guys, Dumbledore's here! <laughs> I felt like I was just one of the fans who had done a little bit of work on it and was just nerding out just like everybody else. Like, it, I, like I got the, the fandom experience on that preview night, it was awesome. When you get enough minds that not only know what they're doing, but uh, have such a huge passion for this franchise or this story or just this, this phenomenon. It elevates it to the point of where it goes way beyond fandom or fan film. And that's why I think the movie Standing Out is, is because it brought on not just incredibly passionate people, but talented people who wanted to take that talent and put it towards the, put it towards the film. I felt like I was in the Wizarding World when we were in that bar. Especially when the DP, John Hafner, put on this last little piece of glass when he was done lighting. And it made everything have this slight glow to it, especially on James's glasses. James's glasses were important to me. They had to be gold because it came from wealth and it was a piece of his character. I had arcs for each character. Uh, James and Snape's arc were, were the strongest. Peter had an arc heading in the direction we all know he would go. Uh, Remus's arc ended early, but Sirius didn't have one yet. So he and I worked that out, and the arc was that for the first time in his life, Sirius Black had to think about the fact that he might lose his family and friends. Um, his family, which is James, Remus, and Peter. And um, that's why he kept saying, like, uh, I'm all for a good row when we're in school, but I don't think they have shared cells in Azkaban. He's like saying, I don't want to lose you guys. We'll be fine as long as we're together. We'll be together. We'll be together. We'll be together. Yeah, let's get pushing that. Please don't leave me. It was important for me to take some things that people had already seen about Remus Lupin and then try to imagine what that man would be like as a, as a young man, as, as somebody that was right out of high school and uh, who was dealing with all of this stuff that m most you know teenagers and young adults do, uh, trying to find a sense of belonging, trying to hold on to the people that are important to you, and trying to figure out how to be an adult after just being a kid for m all of life. James in this movie is kind of an asshole. And if you don't like him, good. You learn something, because that's the point. When I read the script, I just wanted to work on it without bringing my own thing into it first. And I saw a guy who was graduating from high school and figuring out how, what the rest of his life was going to be. And on top of that, there's a huge war that's about to start. And he's trying to like create friends and family and a life. And all of that is in jeopardy because... He knows people who are going to be on the opposite side of that, that fence that could hurt him and, and take things away from him. So it really came down to like what means the most to this character, and that's you know his friends, his family, the people around him, the people he loves. So what would he do to save those people? And the answer is anything. He would do almost anything. I identified with Snape in a lot of what he was going through as far as, you know, the, the outsider mentality and, you know, the bullying, a lot of the, you know, a lot of crap he was going through at the time. I tried to put myself in the headspace of feeling isolated from everything else, having nowhere else to go, uh, clinging to Lily being the only person that really he socialized with or had any connection with, and how desperate he was in this film to just make things right with the only kind of piece of hope that he clung on to. So uh, 
there there was a lot of different layers to explore with him there that he goes through in the film. There's there's a lot of desperation on his part. There's a lot of fear of this uncertain future he's heading into. A lot of anger towards James and the Marauders for bullying him for so long. Or from the moment we see him in that bar scene drinking, he is at a point where he has no idea where his future is going to go and what side he's going to take. I went with uh, I remembering and reading uh, what, what what was said about him uh, as a person because a lot of what well I mean a lot of what we know about him a lot of what was in there is is the culmination of what he's become after after the betrayal after twelve years of the rat uh, so you kind of had to I kind of had to try to figure out what was before that. <laughs> Marauders theme was more sort of fiddle based actually, so uh, a little more bluegrass. Because I wanted to, even though we don't see them really in this movie being the Marauders, I wanted to just do a sort of a wink to the fact that these guys were sort of the rock stars at school. They were, they were doing all these fun, crazy adventures, and I wanted their theme to still be present in the movie, even though they're just fighting Snape, just to kind of bring that edginess to the, to the end of the fight. Harry Potter, it's about love conquering all and that uh, friendship endures and all these like wonderful positive themes and the literary education that kids get. But they also learn things like criminal law doesn't always work efficiently, that uh, people die for no good reason, that people aren't always the perfect image that you had in their minds. So yeah, it's not like all bright, shiny, glitter kind of magic, it's, it's real. <laughs> 